I am Rebecca Olson, CEO of the Maryland Association of CPAs. This year, we're thrilled to once again host the MACPA Foundation's Women to Watch Awards. We're excited to celebrate 30 amazing female leaders in our profession. And these awards not only recognize their success and contributions, but also inspire the next generation of leaders. Join me now for a brief interview with one of our incredible honorees, and we hope to see you in person on September 26th at our Women to Watch Awards breakfast. I am Eliana Lee. I am a senior at Ernst & Young, and I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Well, Eliana, congratulations on being one of our uh, Women to Watch honorees. And I know that you just um, got word in the last several months of a really special and um, really unique designation in our profession, um, being a Cells Award winner, which is just awesome. Um, but maybe that's not, because I don't know your whole career, that you're the accomplishment that you're most proud of. Um, so if it is, that's great. But tell me, what do you think um, so far in your career you are most proud of? I mean, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head with yeah, that. Yeah, did I give it away? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, maybe a tad. I, it's, it's definitely the boring answer. Um, it's but it is the biggest accomplishment that I've had so far. I mean, considering that my career is still pretty young. It's about three years since I even decided to pursue accounting at all. I'm I'm really proud of myself for earning the the sales award. I don't have an undergraduate accounting in uh, an undergraduate degree in accounting. I only really started looking into the profession when I was a senior in college. And so I graduated in May 2021 with a bachelor's in criminology and criminal justice. And between then and now, not only did I learn everything that I know about accounting, I got my master's in accounting, but I also studied hard enough and I dedicated myself to preparing for this career enough to, to receive and to earn the, the sales award. So to just be among the top CPA candidates across the country. And during all of that, I also, I planned a wedding. I got married. I moved apartments three times. I, I proved myself as a top performer at work. I I just been through a lot in three years and I'm really proud of yeah. everything that I was able to accomplish given my limited, limited education and just how stretched my time was between studying and just living and, and work. That is amazing. And I love that you didn't actually major in accounting because I think that's such a cool example of just the breadth and depth of this profession, of the different skills um, that you probably bring into the profession, having a different background educationally, and then getting that master's and, and just the different paths that everyone takes um, to get to this point. And so um, congratulations, that's amazing. Um, and I also recently planned a wedding and moved twice. So I know how much demanding that is on time. And so major kudos to you because to do all of that is um, really phenomenal. Well, congratulations to you. Thank on you. Your Thank you. <laughs> so I wonder, um, being just a couple years in and getting to the level already that you are, there had to have been, I hope, some really amazing um, mentors and people that um, provided inspiration and, and role models to you as you journeyed through this. And maybe they were part of the accounting and finance profession and maybe they weren't. Um, but who would that be for you that really kind of provided that role model? Yeah, I mean, of course, like you said, there there were many people, but the first person that comes to mind um, so in the first few months of my senior year, like I like I said, I was a criminology and criminal justice undergrad, and the advising office for CRIM, that's, what, that's the acronym for it, um, they sent out an email about the Plus One program with the R.H. Smith Student School of Business at University of Maryland. Uh, and so the Plus One program is basically you can take classes and earn credits towards a business master's, in this case accounting, while completing your undergraduate degree. And at the time, I was I was really feeling lost. I wasn't really loving the career paths that were in front of me with my, at the time, current degree. And so I thought, all right, you know what? Let's just hear what Smith has to say. And I went to the presentation. It was over Zoom. It was during COVID <laughs> at the time. And I learned all about the Plus One program. I sent a few emails. And 
really within the month, I was corresponding with Emmanuel Zer, Associate Dean of Smith's MS Accounting Program. And I'll tell you, I've never met someone so excited about my criminology and criminal justice background than, than Emmanuel. I think I was the first crim major to express interest in, in this plus one program. And he really, really took it upon himself to prove that the connection just that the connection made sense, that criminology and accounting work together, that a master's in accounting can apply to people from all different backgrounds, like you mentioned. He walked me through the application process. He guided me through every step of joining the Plus One program. He answered all of my questions. And he really encouraged me to, to just go for it. And so I did. And then he didn't he didn't even stop there. Once he had me enrolled in the program, he he then took it upon himself to help me just to make sure that I succeeded at both University of Maryland at, in class and and also beyond. Mm -hmm. Most internships at that time had already closed their applications for the upcoming summer. And he personally provided my resume to several UMD affiliated recruiters and he guided me through the interview processes and because he had that personal connection with those recruiters he even spoke with them after my interviews and then he gave me feedback and helped coach me for the next ones mm -hmm. and it's it's really because of him that I think I was able to sneak my way into EY because again at the time I had no background in accounting I hadn't I think I'd taken two auditing classes at like total by the time I was an intern with EY and and now I'm a senior there I'm a full-time employee and his stellar recommendation of me all the way back in the day again it helped you know I had a good resume already even though if it wasn't accounting related I, I had internships I had good grades but it was really him and the work that he put into it um, that I think convinced them to accept my application, even though their process was already finished for the semester. And he, I mean, he nominated me as a student speaker for the Smith Accounting graduation dinner. And mm -hmm. I spoke and I really gave him credit as my mentor then and, and still now. I just wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for his guidance or his enthusiasm in wanting me to succeed. Wow. <laughs> What a what a powerful example of the um, influence and um, positive effect and impact that somebody can have on someone else, right? Especially an educator. I know educators probably they they get into education um, for a lot of different reasons, but I'm sure that having that impact and seeing someone. Um, succeed and and being part of that journey and story has just got to be so um, fulfilling. Um, for him and then to to hear the way you talk about him. That's that's really cool. And and having not just a mentor or role model, but a sponsor in a way to really help you get in front of the people that you needed to um to land that job. And obviously um your credentials, your um study, your knowledge got you the job. But um that's that's really awesome to see that. So being in the profession, um a short period of time um, in comparison to, to maybe um, others. I wonder, how have you already seen the accounting and finance profession evolve? What are you seeing, especially because you came in from a different aspect, um, have a, maybe a little more critical eye on what's being um done in the profession and, and how um, it's evolving. And so what advice would you give to someone, um, maybe to yourself a couple years ago or to someone um, that might be considering accounting? Right. I You can talk about technology advancement, policy. There's so many things that you could talk about in terms of what you think the profession is going to look like 10, 15 years down the line. But at the end of the day, right, a profession is defined by its professionals. Mm. And we've seen the number of accounting graduates steadily declining over the past few years. Accounting has this reputation for being boring and tedious while having a very high entry floor with the, CP the CPA license requiring 150 credits and four notoriously difficult exams. AICPA has made recent efforts to lower this entry ceiling. Um, they've extended the time required to pass all four exams from 18 to 30 months. And there are many out there calling for the elimination of the 150 credit requirement altogether. All of these initiatives to make it easier for a young professional to learn what they need to learn and become a CPA without extraneous financial or social stress, that's what we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. But making it easier to become a CPA isn't 
going to attract people who aren't already looking into accounting. Students are turning away from majoring in accounting because they don't see the rewards as worth it. A dull, unglamorous, as many people think, career at with mediocre pay. Among young professionals, having grown up having grown up in this unstable economy with repeated mass layoffs and unemployment struggles, what's important in a career is salary and job stability. Accounting happens to have incredible job stability, so the real issue is the salary versus the effort put in to attain it. A quick Google search will show you that the average CPA salary in, in Maryland is anywhere from 60K to 100,000, but typically on the lower end, it depends on what source you're looking at. And for many, uh, for many students, paying for an extra year of school just to earn those 150 credits, just to risk an average salary of $60,000 a year just isn't worth it. The degree itself costs about 30 to 50. So we see trends to lower the entry floor, but when you think of all the other careers that require having advanced education, including social workers and teachers, lowering the professional image of accountants by eliminating, eliminating the requirement won't necessarily see the result that we need. But this year especially, we have seen some places take another approach. For example, EY, Ernst and Young, and this may appear as biased because I am a senior there, <laughs> but they did in fact invest $1 billion into their audit compensation strategies this year. And so new staff ones in the DMV area are coming in at about $80,000 a year, which is already above the average, um, just as an, as an entry level position. Seniors are breaking six figures after working for only two years. I'm interested to see how the other big four firms react if they want to stay competitive to attracting high quality talent, and if industry jobs take similar strides to retain their CPAs now that public accounting is matching their salaries when before industry jobs, their claim to fame was that it was less work and better pay. I do think that we'll see an evolution towards higher compensation and that in and of, in and of itself tends to promote reputation and prestige as the demand for CPAs brings about more respect for the professions. For the profession. With all that being said, <laughs> I don't want to seem like I am against getting your CPA. I not only have I gotten it, I studied for the exams and I, I worked enough to um, achieve the the sales award. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think that having a CPA, regardless of the struggle to attain it, is absolutely worth it for those who are seeking diverse and interesting careers. I know people in accounting who don't have CPAs and they have a job, it's stable, they're never really worried about losing it, which is very important, especially in this day and age, but they do the same thing every day. And they, I ask them, you know, what do you feel about your job? How do you feel? What do you think about it? And they don't have much to say. It's, they do the same thing every day. They're, they're comfortable, but they don't, they're, they don't think that they're growing. They don't feel like they're learning anything. And having a CPA, it's very unlikely that you'll ever find yourself in that situation. If growth and diversity and being excited and learning something new, doing something new every day is something that interests you, I can only recommend pursuing your CPA from the very beginning, having that goal set in sight. Having that CPA opens so many opportunities. You can pivot to an adjacent profession in financing or consulting. You're just more competitive for higher salaries and higher positions. It's a career enhancer to have the license. Young professionals should have their sights set on earning their license from the very beginning if they want a career path with a thousand open doors. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that really, really important perspective, Eliana. I really appreciate um, your your candor, your honesty um, about the profession and it, and it's, you know, very public struggles with, with talent um, and with the licensure process and pathways and, and all of those things. I think hearing the perspectives of people um, like yourself are, are really, really important. And so I, I really, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts, your story, um, and what EY is doing and, and challenging other organizations um, to do the same because accounting and finance is so critical to uh, the world economy, to our society, right? And the um, just the opportunities for people in this profession are very immense. And, and so one of the things that MACPA has been doing over the last, uh, gosh, maybe year, probably almost two years now, is really diving deep into what can we do as the profession to start changing the narrative a little bit about what 
um, is perceived as what accounting and finance is, what CPAs do, right? Um, is it is it boring? Is it monotonous? Is it going to be automated? All of those things. And, and it starts, honestly, with looking at ourselves and how we talk about um, what we do. And I loved how you explained how exciting it is, the things that you get to do and, and um, so one of the things we've done is, is to dig deep into purpose. What is the, the purpose of each person's unique role as a CPA in, um, business and industry or corporate or government? And how does that person see their unique CPA purpose, um, motivating them, inspiring others and really helping the community? And so I'm curious uh, for you, Eliana, as a newer CPA, what would you say is your CPA purpose? What motivates you? I mean, that's a very loaded question for sure. <laughs> yes. My CPA purpose. I have never quite found that I have a distinct purpose or path in life. I mean, three years ago, if you had asked me if I would be in accounting, I would have left. <laughs> Um, I am less of a, what am I going to do three years from now, five years from now, having that set plan and more the type of person that if I decide to jump, if I decide to change or to run or to switch paths, that I have the ability to do so, that I am facing a limitless road as opposed to being pigeonholed down a straight and narrow path. So my CPA purpose, or having a CPA, to me, it's about not being pigeonholed. There are many professions that are stagnant once you achieve the necessary level education. The skills that you build in your first entry-level jobs define what you become and what becomes available to you in the future. Like I said, when I was a senior in undergrad, I was with my criminology and criminal justice degree, and I was trying to decide, you know, what am I going to do with my life once I graduate? And there were really only three jobs, three paths that that I could see. There was research, there was law enforcement, really just becoming a cop, <laughs> or trying to pursue a law degree. And I really wasn't interested in any of those for, for various reasons, and I started looking elsewhere. I initially chose to get my master's in accounting so that I could pursue a career in forensic accounting. And as I've learned more about the profession, as I've studied for the CPA, as I've worked as a senior and as a staff at EY, and as I've just casually browse the type of jobs that are available to someone like me at my level throughout the past few years, I've come to realize that the opportunities are just so diverse. With my CPA, once, if I decide to transition away from audit, I can work in forensic accounting, financial analysis, fund accounting, portfolio management, acquisitions and transactions valuation, a hundred different types of consulting. <laughs> right? I can lead process improvement projects. I can lead people. With the right networking, I can be a controller, a CFO, a member on a board of directors. The sky is really the limit for a CPA. And it's a profession where you're constantly given the opportunity to expand what you know, to learn something new every day. My CPA journey, my CPA purpose is continue learning, continue growing, and continue building this career. It's not about having a plan. It's not about knowing exactly what I want to be doing three or five, 10 years down the line, but that regardless of what it is, I can do it. To me, not to be dramatic, um, the CPA just means freedom, freedom to pursue what I find interesting. It means having the qualifications and the knowledge to contribute to my team, to think of new ideas and to encourage others to explore with me. Wow, <laughs> that is amazing. And um, I wish I could just bottle you up and take you to every university, every high school classroom that I get to go into, because that's the message of our profession. I love that to you, the CPA means freedom. Um, and what a um, refreshing um, perspective. What if all of us saw that designation in that way and just the possibilities um, and just the 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 passion and excitement that you have, even though we're, you know, through a screen um, is palpable. So, um, wow, we're just delighted to have you as part of our profession. Um, glad we stole you over from uh, the criminology field mm -hmm. and um, really just congratulations um, on 
all of the accomplishments um, thus far and on being one of the Women to Watch honorees. Uh, so as part of the Women to Watch honoree program and the awards, there's two categories, right? We have the experienced leader and we have the emerging leader. And so the key word in both of those categories is leader. And so Eliana, I'm curious, what does being a leader uh, mean to you? Being a leader means being a mentor, a pioneer, and a catalyst for positive change. A leader will guide others to achieving and surpassing a collective goal. A leader will inspire excellence in those around them, both through personal motivation and setting a tone at the top. A leader strives to always leave something better than they found it and to pave a path that others will be able to follow. A leader doesn't settle. They improve, they enhance, they enable their team to improve and enhance, all the while building a sense of camaraderie and trust.